Hi, and my name is Paul from High School Physics Explained, and today you want to know the answer to how the heck do I get a band six in the sciences? So I'm talking about biology, earth environmental science, chemistry, physics, and investigating science. Well, I'm glad you can join me. But before we look at how we get the band six, we need to do a couple of things. Number one, we need to say, well, what are bands? And secondly, how are they determined? And thirdly, what are the criteria that allow us to show what each of the bands are. And that's what I want to do before we get into the nitty gritty. Now, in essence, in the HSC, your performance is measured against a set of criteria or standards. And it's those standards that allows us as markers to place you into certain bands, whether you meet those particular standards. So a band six is the top level, band five, lower and so forth. And if you get a band one, and let's hope not, it basically means you haven't met the minimum standards to pass the course. So really, a band two is actually a pass. Now the mark that is associated with that is basically 10 marks for each of the categories. So we've got band six, which is from 90 to 100, band five from 80 to 90, all the way down to 50. So if you get a 50 to 60 range, you get a band two. Below 50, that's a band one. And again, as I said, that's the minimum standard, but heck, I think if you're watching this video, that's not going to be you. But those marks aren't your raw marks. I'm gonna to explain to you how we get the process from your raw mark to the bands. In essence, during the exam marking process, you've done your exam and we have the marking taking place. And now we have a raw exam mark of yours. And of course, you're also your moderated assessment mark. And then what happens is the judges start working out what is the mark that is demonstrating a student that is meeting the minimum requirements for that band. So let me give you an example. You might find that uh, as they go through the exam and give a mark to each of the questions and ask themselves what would a bare minimum band six get for that question and so forth for each of the uh, borderlines, they end up getting a final mark. And then that mark is adjusted to meet the band criteria. So let's say, for example, we talk about Tom. Tom gets 87. During the judging process, we find that a person who gets 87 actually has met the minimum requirements based on the course performance descriptions of a band six. So Tom gets a band six. But before he gets the band six, his 87 gets now modified or moderated to become 90 because 90 is the mark for the band six. Now that means anyone above Tom certainly meets the criteria of a band six and they get pushed up accordingly relative to Tom. Below is also the case. So for example, let's say we have another student who gets a mark of 80 five, for example, and in the process of the moderation, their mark gets pushed up to 89. They cannot say, oh, I was one short of a band six. No, no, they never were near a band six because they were not demonstrating the properties of a band six criteria. So that's an important distinction. It's based on the criteria, not just on the raw marks. But now let's break down what these descriptions are actually saying. Now I'm gonna use the ones for physics, but they're pretty much identical for all the other subjects, bar a few minor little differences. And in essence, the descriptions are basically broken down into a number of categories. Now, the first aspect is knowledge, and we won't deal too much with the bands threes and fours because really we're targeting the bands fives and six, but I wanna show you the progression of what's required for each of those bands. So in terms of knowledge, you'll notice first of all is that as you go up the bands, a student demonstrates higher order understanding and knowledge. So, so we start from basic, we move to sound, thorough, and then finally a band six student is extensive. Not only extensive, but their ability to also include complex and abstract ideas. So here's a student who knows their work so well that they can have a full understanding of the stuff that's not easily understood. Their understanding is so extensive that they can apply their knowledge to new situations. They're not just going to be doing the right questions. And thirdly, their knowledge is so extensive, they can do questions that somehow combine very disparate areas. Now, the second area is communication. 
your ability to express yourself in a way that's clear using correct terminology and being concise and logical is really important. And a band five, band six student is able to do that effectively. So when we look at communication, you'll see that we start with basic scientific terms being used. A band four is more effective, band five is not only that, but logical and a band six is able to be succinct, logical, consistently using the correct terms and applying the correct numbers and terms to a wide variety of situation and context. And that means not just in written form, but also let's say in graphical form or diagrammatic form. So that's a real key here for a band five, band six, their ability to communicate in a variety of ways, precisely, accurately, succinctly, uh, and so forth is really important. If we now look at designing investigation, so you've done that in practice exams, for example, but in the HSC exam, you might get a question that connects to your practical experiences. Again, what are you doing? You're not only designing experiments, you're collecting data, but you're also doing it safely. You're familiar with the term of reliability and validity and accuracy and precision. Secondly, you're familiar with a risk assessment. So a good student, band five, band six, is able to evaluate risks, mitigate where necessary, and making modifications in order to minimize the risk. What about processing information? Well, this is looking at information and understanding it and putting it together. And that also means information that may be represented in different formats and being able to extract information from that. So again, if you look at the bands, you'll see that there's an increasing level of complexity as we go along. They're able to interpret accurately, reliably, val with validity, relevant qualitative, which means in terms of descriptions and quantitative, which is referring to numbers, primary and secondary data, and being able to explain phenomena and make predictions. So a good example is graphing. Are you able to look at a graph and extract the information and then explain certain things? So for example, in physics, you might be asked to draw a graph, work out the slope, and then determine something from the slope to explain a certain concept. That's the hallmark of a band five and band six. And I often tell my students, look, if graphing is your weakness, drawing them, interpreting, or drawing as a weakness, then really what you're at the moment representing is a band four student. So if you want to get yourself into the band five, band six category, those are the areas you need to work on. And then finally, we have problem solving. Now, the classic problem solving is, of course, numerical problems. That's one form of problem solving. But there are other things as well. So in other words, they can collect data from a graph and then use the data to actually answer a certain question. They can then apply certain models and principles from different areas to address the question in need. And that's going to be seen in many of the subjects. So now what I want to do is I want to just take a few quick example questions from some exam questions from different subjects. And I'm going to show you where you have to demonstrate some of those categories. Uh, and, and in all these examples, I'm using 2019 papers. So here's an example from the biology exam, and this is about diseases. Now I'm not going to go through details of the questions, but I'm going to highlight something about the marking guidelines as we go through. And you'll notice that in order to get the maximum marks for this particular question, you need an extensive knowledge. Remember that was actually the band six criterion for the knowledge section. The other thing I wanted to highlight here in this case, in order to get that eight mark, you need to demonstrate that knowledge in a way that is logical and succinct and with precise biological terms. So you could be very knowledgeable, but you could be all over the place with your language. Well, all of a sudden you don't meet that criteria and chances are you are lessening the chances of you getting a band six. Here's another example from biology. And now in this case, we have a table and we have a map. So there's information here that's in different formats. So you're processing information to an analyze, in this case, the factors that could contribute to the changing global distribution of dengue fever and malaria. You're combining information here. So you're also doing problem solving and you're also demonstrating your knowledge here, all built into this question. Now, here's an example from physics. 
So this is a nine mark question from last year. And in this case, there's a lot of information. And if the first thing you'll notice there is we already have processing information there because we have a graph that you have to try to interpret it. But I wanna highlight a couple of other things as well. Firstly, we need production and radiation of energy of the sun. So there's a depth of knowledge that's required there. Thirdly, we also have problem solving because you need to do quantitative analysis. So in other words, there's some numbers up there and somehow you have to tie in data to work out the temperature of the sun. Here's a chemistry example. Again, processing information, we have a graph, right? And of course, you have to have a good knowledge to explain the shape of that graph. And now here's an example from physics where it is an example of a student's experiment and you have to justify the validity of the student's claim. So now this is about designing experiments. Now you're not designing this experiment, what are you doing? You are actually asking the question, is their design good? All right, so you need a good understanding of designing experiments if you're gonna address that properly. And finally, I have an example from Earth Environmental Science, and this is a nine mark question. Do you notice the very first part of the sentence here? There is an expectation that you understand what the working scientifically skills are. But again, I show you the marking guidelines. You have to demonstrate a depth of knowledge and you have to communicate that in a coherent and logical way using the correct terminology. So really, what do you need to get a band six? Well, I'm sorry to say there are no shortcuts. You're gonna have to work hard to achieve the band six. You need to know your work well and you need to be able to communicate your work well. I always tell my students, it doesn't matter if you know it up here. If you can't write it down, if you can't express it, it is not going to help you. So in essence, what I encourage you to do is know the course performance descriptions for your subject. Know how to recognize what's asked for in each of the questions that you might attempt. Find out the area that you're weakest in. In other words, they're the ones that you're gonna have to work on. So for example, if you have a problem with rearranging equations, work on that. If you have a problem in interpreting graphs, find the questions from past papers that deal with graphs and practice and practice and practice. Make sure you're familiar with the syllabus not only the knowledge aspects of it, but also the scientific skills. And do lots of practice. Download the exams, download the marking guidelines, answer the question and check your answer with the marking guidelines provided. And if you're not so sure, maybe ask your teacher to give you feedback to say, look, is this a band six response? Is this a band four response? And if it is a band four response, what do I need to do in order to make it a band five or band six response? And you know what? You then go and redo that question again so that you're practicing the skills of a band six response. Well, that I hope has been hopefully helpful for you as you prepare for the trials and also for the HSC at the end of the year. But now what I wanna do is I wanna briefly talk to the teachers. So you are wanting to take your students from a band three to band four, band four to five, and hopefully up to a band six. What are the suggestions you need to do in order to help them? The first thing is I say to my students as well, know the course performance descriptions so that you're familiar with them and so that you can adequately tell your students what performance that they're actually exhibiting or demonstrating. Be explicit, that is tell your students this is what you need to do in order to be demonstrating a band five or a band six. Thirdly, make sure you're designing your assessment tasks and your exams so that they show the range of the course performance descriptors. In other words, your students who are struggling in physics are still having the ability to achieve, but you also have the ability to discriminate between those students who are performing at a band five or a band six level. And most importantly, of course, you're exposing your students to what a band five, band six type of question looks like, or at least what they're supposed to do in answering that. You see, what you don't want is, for example, at the end of the year, you get four or five students getting in their 90s, but they were never exposed to band six type questions. And so when they sit the exam, they might not get the band six because they didn't know what was required of them. And finally, of course, communicate to your students and help them with their progress. I tell my students every now and then when they give me a response, look, this is a good answer, but actually at the moment, it is actually not a fulsome answer. It's only demonstrating a band four or band five response. But this is what you need to do in order to improve it. So how about have another go? My name is Paul from High School Physics Explained. I appreciate that not all of you are physics teachers and physics students. I hope you still like and share this video. 
Um, but if you do like physics, subscribe and drop a comment down below if this has been particularly helpful for you. In any case, good luck in your teaching and in your learning. Take care. Bye for now.